think of it like a trip to the doctor's office for a southern resident orca. Veterinarian Joe Gatos of the Sea Doc Society is among scientists using new tools to better assess orca health and prescribe solutions. For southern residents, it's, it's not are you a drinker or are you a smoker, do you exercise? It's the contaminants that are in your system. How much noise is in the ocean? Is there enough food for you to eat? And what we've realized recently is, you know, do you have any diseases going on? They're building a network of vets and biologists to collect vitals, like a provider would during your yearly physical, and create long-term medical records for each whale, like people and pets have. I would like to see us be able to incorporate all, not just veterinarians, but all of the biologists that know them well. They'll say, I was out taking photographs and this animal didn't look right. Using a drone, they can look at height and weight to see if an animal is skinny, healthy, or pregnant. With infrared cameras, they can check their temperatures for signs of fever. They can look for lesions on the skin, signs of disease, and they can collect breath samples to search for pathogens or abnormal cells. They see symptoms of the problems scientists and the state's orca recovery program are trying to fix. I want people to have hope. I want people to know that they live in an, a beautiful environment, but they have to do their part. Pollutants like PCBs have built up in the fish they eat and their blubber. They are directly to newborns delivering a nice dose of toxic chemicals into the milk um, for their newborn calf. So that really impacts survival. They ask all of us to more carefully dispose toxics and are raising concerns about chemicals coming from tires. Another problem is vessel noise, which makes it hard for them to find food or communicate. A new law going into effect in January 2025 will require all vessels to stay 1,000 yards away from them. Giving whales that extra space, we hope, will allow them to be more successful in finding food. Then there's the supply of prey itself. Southern residents only eat fish, mostly Chinook salmon. When there's not enough to go around, they may not starve, but they'll lack nutrition and become susceptible to disease. Gatos hopes action on these issues, along with more medical assessments, will help. So we can diagnose a problem, then we can treat a problem, which is super cool. But he says it's also time to step up funding and enforcement. I think we're in that position now where we've been doing the easy things, and now we need to do some more hard stuff. We owe it to the whales, we owe it to ourselves. They're a part of our collective culture, living in Seattle, living in Vancouver. We have to take care of our neighbors. For Environment Northwest, I'm Erica Zucco.